Hey everyone, welcome back to DSP Lectures. So far we were familiarizing with sequences and in this video also we will continue on sequences, specifically classification of sequences. A discrete time signal can be classified in various ways. One classification is based on the symmetry of samples with respect to time index n equal to 0. Discrete signals can also be classified based on its properties like periodicity, whether they are bounded or unbounded sequences, whether they are absolutely summable sequences, and whether they are square summable sequences. We will discuss each of these classifications in detail in this lecture. So, let's start our lecture. Any sequence can be classified into even or odd sequence based on its symmetry with respect to time index n equal to 0. An even sequence is one in which x of n equal to x of minus n, that is, a sequence which is symmetric with respect to y axis. These two discrete signals are symmetric as they mirror about the y axis and follows the rule x of n equal to x of minus n, that is, if you see, here at n equal to 1 we have 0, so at n equal to minus 1 also we have 0. At n equal to 2 we have 2, therefore at n equal to minus 2 also we have 2. Similarly, you can see for rest of the samples also. On the other hand, an odd sequence is one which is symmetric with respect to origin and follows x of n equal to minus of x of minus n. And these two sequences are examples of odd sequences. For instance, if you see x of 2 is 2, therefore x of minus 2 is negative of x of 2, which is minus 2. Similarly, x of 3 is 3 and x of minus 3 is minus 3, x of 4 is minus 3, therefore x of minus 4 is plus 3 and so on. An important point here is that the value at the index n equal to 0 should always be 0. Otherwise, it will lead to a logical fallacy. I mean, if you had x of 0 equal to 1, then minus of x of minus 0 will be minus 1, right? But for an odd signal, x of 0 should be equal to minus of x of minus 0, which will give us 1 equal to minus 1. But this is not possible. So, for an odd sequence, the value at n equal to 0 should always be 0. Now, purely odd or purely even sequences are rare in nature. However, any sequence can be expressed as a sum of its even part and its odd part. So, we can write a sequence x of n is equal to x c of n plus x o of n, where x c of n is the even part of the sequence x of n, and x of n is the odd part of the sequence x of n. Here, x of n is obtained by the equation x of n equal to half of x of n plus x of minus n. And x of n is obtained by the equation x of n equal to half of x of n minus x of minus n. Now, you might be wondering how did we obtain these two equations? Let me show that to you. For that, let's take this equation as equation number 1. Now, let's replace n with minus n in equation 1. This gives us x of minus n equal to x c of minus n plus x of minus n. Also, we know that by definition of even signal, x c of n equal to x c of minus n. See, we have already learned that here. Also, x o of n is equal to minus x o of minus n. Therefore, we have x o of n equal to minus x o of minus n. So, we can plug these two into this equation, which gives us x of minus n equal to xc of minus n is equal to xc of n, therefore xc of n plus x of minus n is equal to minus x of n, therefore minus x of n. And let's name this equation number 2. Now, equation 1 
plus equation 2 equal to x of n plus x of minus n equal to 2 times x c of n which gives us x c of n equal to x of n plus x of minus n divided by 2. So this is how this equation came into picture. Similarly, if I take 1 minus 2, then we have x of n minus x of minus n, which is equal to 2 times x of n, which gives us x of n equal to x of n minus x of minus n by 2 and this is how this equation came into picture. So I hope now you understood how we got these two equations for even and odd component of a discrete signal. Now let's also see an example based on this topic. For that let's take a simple sequence x of n equal to minus 2 1 2 0 minus 1. Then x of minus n will be like this. To find the even component of x of n, let's add together x of n and x of minus n. So, x of n plus x of minus n and this sequence will be, here also we are, should be putting brackets, okay, minus 2 plus minus 1 which is minus 3. 1 plus 0 which is 1, 2 plus 2 which is 4, 0 plus 1 which is 1 and minus 1 plus minus 2 which is minus 3. Now the equation for even component is half times this sequence. So x of n plus x of minus n which will be half of these samples which are minus 1.5, 0 0.5, 2, 0.5 and minus 1.5. Plotting this sequence in a graph you can see that it is symmetric with respect to y-axis. So we have found the even component of x of n. Now let us try to find out the odd component of x of n. For that let us subtract x of minus n from x of n. So x of n minus x of minus n gives us minus 2 minus minus 1 which is minus 1, 1 minus 0 which is 1, 2 minus 2 which is 0, 0 minus 1 which is minus 1 and minus 1 minus minus 2 which is plus 1. Now to obtain the odd sequence x of n we have to take half the values of this sequence x of n minus x of minus n which is half of minus 1 is minus 0.5 half of 1 is 0.5, half of 0 is 0, half of minus 1 is minus 0.5 and half of plus 1 is plus 0.5. Now plotting the sequence in a graph, you can see that the signal is symmetric about origin. So we have found out the odd component of x of n. Now if you add together this odd component and even component, you will get back the original signal x of n. Let's try that also. So x of n plus x c of n equal to minus 1.5 plus minus 0.5 which is minus 2, 0.5 plus 0.5 which is 1, 2, plus 0 which is 2 then 0.5 plus minus 0.5 which is 0 and minus 1.5 plus 0.5 which is minus 1 and you can see that this is the original signal x of n.
An important thing to note is that even and odd symmetry is possible only if the parent sequence x of n is of odd length defined for a symmetric interval minus m less than or equal to 0 less than or equal to m. In our example, if you see, the length of x of n is odd with m equal to 2. The next classification of sequences is whether they are periodic sequences or aperiodic sequences. Consider a sequence x of n. If x of n satisfies the condition x of n equal to x of n plus k into capital N for all small n, then x of n is called a periodic signal with a period capital N. Here, capital N is a positive integer and k can be any integer. As an example, this is a periodic sequence as it repeats itself. The smallest period for which it repeats is n equal to 7. This is called the fundamental period nf for a periodic signal. Fundamental period is important because we can also say that the sequence is periodic for any multiples of n. For instance, if you look, this sequence is periodic for n equal to 14 also. Okay. But we are usually only interested in the fundamental period. Okay. Now, as you can guess, an aperiodic sequence is one which is not periodic. To distinguish between a periodic and aperiodic sequence, we will denote a periodic sequence with a bar on top, like this. Now, another way to classify signals are based on whether they are bounded, absolutely summable or square summable sequences. A sequence x of n is said to be bounded if each of its samples is of magnitude less than or equal to a finite positive integer. That is, magnitude of x of n should be less than or equal to bx, which is less than infinity. For example, this periodic sequence is a bounded sequence with bound bx equal to 3. Okay. Next, a sequence is said to be absolutely summable sequence if it satisfies the condition sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity magnitude of x of n is less than infinity. Finally, we have square summable sequences. A sequence is said to be square summable if sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity magnitude of x of n squared is less than infinity. These three are mathematical definitions and does not have much importance beyond that. Now, there is one more type of classification, energy and power sequences. We will learn about them in the coming lectures. Okay, so to summarize the lecture, we learned about odd and even sequences, periodic and aperiodic sequences, bounded and unbounded sequences, absolutely summable sequences, square summable sequences, and finally, energy and power sequences. I hope that all the concepts that were taught in this video are clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them in the comments. Either we or some other viewer will surely help you out. If you found this lecture useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next video, we will learn about the definition of energy and power for a signal. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.